Okay, hello and good morning. Uh, welcome to the latest CORIC webinar. Here we're going to introduce you to the Trimble TSC7 and Access 2018 software. My name is Jared Pogmore. I'm the Regional Sales Director at CORIC, looking after the northwest area of the UK. And with me is Tor Eric Gipos, better known as Ted. He's the Applications Engineer at Trimble and our port of call if we need any help on training for new Trimble releases. So the purpose of this presentation is to introduce you to the new Trimble TSC7 controller. I'm going to briefly run through the hardware side of things and a couple of the background systems. Ted will then introduce you to Trimble Access 2017 software. So this is the latest version of Access, especially designed to run on the more new powerful hardware and the larger screen the TSC7 gives you. And it'll also give you a live demonstration running the software. So I'm sure everyone watching this will all be aware of what the TSC7 looks like. There's been a large buzz around the launch. I know I couldn't wait to get my hands on the kit and try it out myself. So in the short amount of time I've had to use it, I found that it blends the best of the previous TSC3 with its ergonomic keyboard and also has the power of a, a tablet PC with its large display. So the Trimble TSC7 is the latest controller in the TSC format introduced back in 1992 with a TDC1. And there's been a, an evolution which has been taking place over the last 26 years. So as far back as in 1997, Trimble introduced the larger full screen displays that we're all used to now. Color was introduced then in 2003. And then the TSC2, which was the first TSC unit I ever used, was launched in 2005. This brought greater connectivity with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you no longer needed cables getting in the way when you're out on site. And this also helped with an easier process of carrying out integrated surveying. And then with the TSC2, back in 2009, Trimble released the original version of Trimble Access to take over from Trimble Survey Controller software. In 2011, the TSC3 came into the market. This had an internal modem built in, making it far more simple for Trimble VRS to be used on site, and also send and receive files on site using Trimble Access Sync. So this means you no longer have to go back to the office or home to download and process, and also you knew things would be backed up. So this is all a major integral part of the, the new version of Trimble Access, which, say, Ted will dive into a little bit later on. Now in 2018, we've got the brand new TSC7, and I'm sure most people on the, the webinar around will know the reason for calling that is due to the seven inch screen. So you can see there's been a long history of Trimble developing and making things better and bringing the new features forward and making them better and better. So as Trimble say, the TSC7 sits in the sweet spot. It's designed to sit in the middle of the existing range of controllers. The TSC7 is sort of sat in the middle next to the TSC3, which is running the current style of Trimble Access. And this will still be a perfect solution for many people out on site who just want a basic logger that can log points and use all day long. And then you've got the T10 tablet, which with its iCore 7 processor can be used as a main PC as well. And this will also be running the latest version of Trimble Access along with the TSC7. So at a, at a glance at everything, all the features on here, firstly, you can see that the TSC7 runs Windows 10 Pro. So you could run this as a Microsoft Office PC. You could have all your email accounts on it anything you may want to do out on site. It's got a very bright seven inch rugged screen that can be used in absolutely any light. I was amazed when I took it out just how good it was in pure sunlight shining directly on it from behind. It's got a quad core Pentium processor, eight gig of RAM, 64 gig internal storage and expandable as well. So it's certainly got enough power and memory to keep anyone going. And We've got hot swappable batteries now, which can be used on site. 
the keyboard is now backlit, so this can be used at night time. And we've introduced um, six hardware function keys plus an extra six with a shortcut. So you've got one button push to get to your favorite places. We now got USB 3 built in. So it's got all the latest. Um, sorry. It's got all the latest um, external data. And you can also retain your DB9 connector if you want to. Dual cameras are there. So you've got eight megapixel forward facing camera or rear camera, sorry, for taking photos and videos out on site if you need to. And a two megapixel forward or facing camera. So you can use extra applications built into Windows 10 like Skype if you need to. And this is Trimble's first controller to bring in the new Empower modules. So these have been introduced so you can swap modules out on site or in the field instead of sending back to the office. So I'll go a little bit more into detail about that later on. And with all Trimble products, this has got an IP68 rating. So that means in theory, it can be submerged for up to two hours and it can be used all day long in a dusty environment without any issues. So one of the main features of this is the ergonomic design, which you can see here. It's, um, <clears throat> It's got um, hot support batteries on the back, so you don't need to actually power down midway through your work. The battery bays are fully IP rated as well, so you can do this in any weather conditions. So even if it's raining outside and your battery power is running low, you can swap the batteries over without any problem. You'll see on the batteries there, fully intelligent with power indicators need to enter your cell. So you can have confidence before you leave the office, you'll have enough power for all day out on site. These can be fully recharged in around three and a half hours each. So you've got literally no excuse for stopping one out on site. So the body has been designed to be comfortable to hold in the hand. You can reach all the keys with one hand, making it simple and fast to use on site. Very well balanced on the detail pole. You can also see there's a newly designed pole bracket, which clips directly onto the recesses of the actual logger itself. And plus there's a hand strap which you can place on either side. So if you're not using a detailed pole, you can be safe that, or assure that it's gonna stay in your hand that you've got very little chance of dropping it and hopefully not damaging it. So this logger has been designed to basically work with all the Trimble products out there. So it works with a full range of GPS, the full range of total stations. This now also includes the SX-10. So I'm sure most people on the call will know about the SX-10 scanning total station. So the TSC-7 itself has a, a crisp, bright screen, high processing power unit. So this enables um, you to use the SX-10 to its full potential with the camera, giving you the best experience than ever before. So you can use the camera to take DR measurements out on site on buildings. You can zoom right into details and get faster, more accurate details. When viewing panoramas taken with the SX-10, they look crisper and the point cloud data sets are very easily navigated. So, so you can use the SX-10 to its full potential, doing whatever you need with the scanning, making the SX-10 and the TSC-7 the perfect match on site. So the main thing people will notice with um, Trimble Axis is the new user layout. It's been fully redesigned to take advantage of the full size screen. It's now project driven instead of job driven and it's fully customizable, making it easier and more user friendly than ever. So I'm not gonna get into more detail on this because this will be part of what Ted will run through in his live demonstration on the PC. So a brief summary of the TSC-7. It's easier to use in the field with this large bright screen and ergonomic design. Got a backlight on the keyboard, making it perfect for anyone using any conditions, especially people working on nighttime. You can use larger data sets, either ones you collect on site or larger background maps as well. It's got fully customizable keys. 
So you can put all your frequently used functions literally just one button press away. Hot swappable batteries, so there's no delay during your day. With an IP rating of 68, it will truly work in any conditions you may venture out on as well. So all this leads to faster collection of data, which is better quality than ever before. So on top of this, there's a few extra parts and accessories you can get as well. The keyboard itself, you can choose to have a QWERTY or ABC, as in previous models. So some people prefer one to the other. And for the first time ever, you can buy the logger in three different variations. So you can get full on Trimble access, which will basically run absolutely anything that Trimble have on offer. Access GNSS only. So with this version, it will only run GPS. This will actually save you a little bit of money if you're not running total stations. And say so for the first time now, you can get a standalone unit. So if you already own an older TSC unit with an up-to-date software license on that you may want to retire, then you can transfer that license across, which will not only save you money, but it'll give you the, say, the new controller. There's a few extra accessories to go with it as well. So you've got the, the shoulder bag, which you can carry the, the controller around in. All of them will come with a hand strap, making it very safe to hold on to all times. And we've got a new redesigned pole mount, which is um, designed to clip straight directly onto the back of there. And you can also get a, a shoulder sling as well for people who want to walk around hands-free during the day. You've also got a 12-volt power adapter here, so you can actually charge within the car itself if you're out and about. So you've got extra batteries there, so you can use those. And it will also charge within the dedicated power units as well. And so the newest feature within the Trimble TSE 7 is the new Empower modules, giving you greater flexibility and interchangeability by the customer. So previously, if you want to put a radio onto your TSC3 controller, for instance, you had to go into the workshop. Now this is something the customer can do out on site or in the office by itself. You can fit up to two at a time on the logger. So on the far left of the screen, you've got the um, 2.4 gigahertz module. This is used with the S-series total station and the SX-10 when working at longer ranges. And you've also got the EM100 GNSS module, which is the next one along. This allows you to get from, down from one meter, basically, or down to half a meter accuracy out on site if you didn't want to use an external GPS receiver. And then you've got a range of barcode and RFID readers as well. So that's my brief introduction to TSC7. And this is the point where I will hand you over to Ted to give you an actual full run through of Trimble Access 2018. <clears throat> Thank you uh, very much for that, uh, Jared. Uh, as I said, my name is Tord uh, Erik Jupus, Ted. I've uh, been with Trimble for about 20 years. And uh, today I will take you through some of the new things that we have done with uh, the next generation of Trimble Access, which is Trimble Access 2018. When we released uh, the current version of Trimble Access, which um, um, is which have the, the the layout that most of you have used from Blaxis uh, currently. No, it was released back in 2009, and at that point, uh, this was really kind of focused and optimized to run on um, a Windows Mobile system environment, um, and it was uh, it was good to do that, and that has served us well up till now. However, as the world has moved on. Um, we as user and the hardware around us has changed and, and the way we interact with some of these devices such as our mobile phones um, our uh, tablets and so on has kind of <clears throat> um, made a change in, in in how we do this so it was time to do some updates to uh, the version of triple access we have and, and the result of that is 
is what you will see in 2018. So the bottom line benefit of this, as I say, it's a completely new user interface um, to, to what you are used to. Uh, so we can use a lot more in terms of gestures and zooms and these type of things. Hopefully, uh, some better visualization uh, around the workflows. It's a lot more map-centric, split screen. Uh, <clears throat> we have tried to make it more intuitive. Uh, we've tried to improve on some of the workflows that we've we've gotten feedback on. And we tried to kind of make some of these things that maybe before was a bit awkward, um, a bit better. We've added function keys um, and favorites, uh, which is kind of the key thing within this new version in terms of how you move about. Now, a lot of people say that, oh, it looks very, very different. Well, I, I say to them that it is still very much Trimble Access, but is Trimble Access organized in a slightly different way? So as soon as you start getting under the hood of the software, you will soon realize that, oh, I recognize that page and I recognize that page. So as I say, it's, it's, it's just organized slightly better, um, which hopefully will benefit um, all of you. Some of the key changes we've done with this version that we've added in what we call or what's called function keys. So we've been asked over the years why we couldn't have more function keys uh, on our data loggers. And we listened to that on the TSC7 um, and we added in. So we have six uh, function keys, fully programmable function keys uh, that you can add in uh, functionality to. We also enhanced most of the forms in such a way that more of the forms can be added to the function keys, um, which will make it a really, really quick way of going from one place to another or a really quick way of <clears throat> um, getting into that particular form or that particular function that you, you want to do. This comes empty when the logger comes, so it's up to you to, to program this so you can set up this fully. Um, in, in, in your way and how you, you want it. And the function keys together with what we call the Trimble favorites is really the key for uh, being efficient with a logger, uh, specifically being efficient and moving about in the menu structure. Um, on the TSC7, you will have uh, two keys quite next to each other. Uh, which one will kind of take you in and the other will take you out and that together with the function keys and these favorites, uh, you can be very quick and moving, not only kind of in and out of the software, but also uh, sideways, depending on, on where you want to do. These favorite menus, they're also uh, fully configurable. So you can, you can set up this favorite according to how you want to do it. And the way you do it is whenever a form comes up, uh, you'll have a little star on it, which basically means that it can be uh, configured and you can go in and put it either to a favorite, a function or both, which makes it really fast and effective to, to do it. The TSC7 comes with a 7-inch uh, screen. And as I said uh, in the beginning, the current version of Trimble Access is really optimized to, to work on a much smaller screen and a completely different shaped screen. So in order to utilize the space better, the layout on where some of the information sit is, um, is, is a bit different. So you can see here, um, it's a lot more map centric. Uh, we moved all the information that used to sit on the right side in terms of whether you're connected to a GPS receiver or a total station. We move that up on the top. So this is now also where you find things like your precision levels, your radio information and stuff like that. But it's still the same thing. You can click on any of this. You can click on the GNSS receiver or the total station and it will take you straight into that instrument menus um, as you did be before. <clears throat> but we do believe that this is, 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 is a better usage of the screen and, and hopefully it will be good for you too. Now, Trimble Access uh, 2018 is a version that is fully optimized for uh, Windows 10. So. It is running on devices such as the TSC7 and also uh, the T10. Um, it will support platforms that runs on Windows 7 and 8, but you have to check the hardware. Um, we haven't just kind of changed the, the, the code here. We're using uh, something different, so it's requiring a bit more hardware to run. We did try to run it on the Yuma 2, but it wasn't running particularly 
well. So we decided that uh, if you have a Yuma 2, you have to run on the on the on the current version. The controllers, so if that's the TSE 3, TCU, and GO7, will not run on Trimble Access 2018. Um, it will it will keep running the what we call the 2017 version. Now we're not we're not discontinuing that. We're not discontinuing the TSE 3. These are still loggers that will go. We will we will keep uh, developing the, the the current version of Trimble Access. Um, though most of our focus will move on to 2018 and and, and move that uh, forward. And then also uh, for those of you who have Trimble Access, uh, you have your Access version in warranty, or it's um, on a software agreement. Uh, you can transfer any of these maintenance or any of these licenses over to a new logger. So whether you have an old version of Trimble Access 2017, you can you can then move that over to new TS7 um, and start using the new version of Trimble Access if uh, that what what you want to do, or if even if you want to trial it. We've also made some changes to how we kind of distribute our emulator. We've had an emulator uh, available for. Um, all the years we've had Trimble Access and also before that server controller, but we've been quite restrictive on, on who could have it and how we've distributed it. Uh, we've opened up on this and um, uh, one thing we will include as part of our Trimble installation manager, which is the software that we install a lot of things through, is also the capability for anybody who wants to either trial Trimble Access or wants to have uh, their own emulator to go in and create themselves um, a license. There will be limits in what you can do with it, specifically in terms of point storage, but it's great for um, teaching, um, learning Trimble Access, uh, using it for uh, education. You can also use it for checking and so on and so on. So different to previous years, when this is uh, being released, um, anybody can go on create themselves a license, log on, download, um, and you can use that um, as, as an emulator for, for everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we released uh, Trimble Access back in 2009, we also had a, a first for that, and we, we introduced then something that was called Trimble Access Sync. This was kind of our first introduction into having a synchronization service where you could send data between a cloud um, and your, your, your field work. Um, that served us quite well, however, as the whole internet side of things and specifically the, the infrastructure that creates some of these things have changed. Uh, these services have become a bit slow and a bit outdated and as part of the Trimble Access 2018 release, we've updated uh, this to a new service, which is called Trimble Sync Manager. Uh, Trimble Sync Manager will let you uh, send data in the same way, um, whereas you have data sitting in on your controller and you want to send it back or you want to send it from the controller and over to, to the office. However, it will do so much more efficiently, it will do so much more faster than the previous one, but it will also let you do a lot more than that. We've tried to integrate um, kind of a more create a job from the from the office side of things. So all the thing you would normally do on a data logger in the field in order to create a new job, link in files, uh, add on control points, um, these type of things can actually be done in the office by a person there. Um, set up and make a controller ready to go. Um, it can be assigned to individuals. Um, so when the when the surveyor is then synchronizing its its data, the controller is basically up and running, ready, ready, ready to go. And we've also made this integration a bit closer to our office software, TBC. So which means that you can more or less just download data directly from the logger through the cloud into TBC. Or the other way around, you can take data from TBC and send it directly to the logger. I will try to give um, a very brief demonstration on that uh, after that. So that was uh, that was a few slides on uh, on the new version of Trimble Access. Um, I'll I'll take you through um, a very brief introduction to Trimble Access on 
on the live side of things. There we go. So when you start Trimble Access today, it will look slightly different to what you have seen uh, before. If you don't have anything else, it will pretty much look like you see here now. Now, the difference between this one and the old one is that the six button um, startup window has go. You no longer kind of log in with your own username. Everything is, is project driven. So you create a project and under each project, you can create a number of jobs. So whether you want to have one project and many jobs or many project and one job, that's entirely uh, down to you. In this case, I'm gonna just create myself um, a new project. So I'm gonna call it project one, and I can put in an image, description, anything um, of what it is. And I've done that, for those of you using Trimble Access, we'll recognize this page. It's, it's the same page that you've used for uh, your standard Trimble Access. So I'm gonna call this job one. Um, I can go in and create um, coordinate system in exactly the same way as I've done before. So this is basically where you recognize um, the old version of Trimble Access um, being the same as, as before. And here I can go, I can link in file, I can create an active map, I can put in my feature code library exactly the same way as you have done before. Now one thing that is new with, with this version of Trimble Access is that you won't find any more pages. And this kind of slots into a bit more how we operate with our modern phones today. So you kind of flick the screen. So in this case, you will see there is a little gray area at the side here, which means that there is there is more. So rather than there being a page, you can you can simply flick up and down to to get the video, which is falling more into how we would operate on a on a tablet or a mobile phone. So when I'm happy with my thing, I said accept, and um, in that case, I will be uh, into the main screen. Now, I'm just going to start an emulator here so we can see how it looks like um, when we, we go. So it will take a little bit for that to connect. And this will be the same as you would uh, normally connect to any kind of uh, receiver. And there we go, now we connect to the receiver and you can see on the top uh, where you will now have the information. This used to sit on the right side, but um, that information is now moved up to where it is. But similar as you do there, you could go in and you can click on that one and it will take you straight to uh, the GNSS function menu as it used to be before. On the software, you will have this button, and this button will also be reflected on uh, the TSE 7 itself, which kind of is the button that will always take you into um, something else. So if I click that, it will take me uh, to kind of the main window, which brings up your favorite screen. And here I will have my job data and general survey. So previously you would have to kind of log into general survey, and then you would have your six or four, five, six buttons sitting underneath here. They're listed on the side here. And if I wanted to start um, and measure a job, I could do as I used to do before. I could go measure, I could go to my RTK and I can say measure point. In this case, it will start um, start the survey in that way. And there we go. Now we're up. Uh, we have the measure point form up. Um, we have our e-bubble if you connect it to an R10 and you're ready to go and measure that point. Now I can escape out of it and I can go again, measure and end my GNSS survey. And as I say, the two main thing that we've added in with, with, with this new version of Trimble Access is really the use of function keys and the use of these uh, favorites. Whenever I open one of these favorites, it will always open here. So if I open language, it stay open. If I open um, this, they will always stay open in the return to page. So it's easy to go um, back and forth to, to where I wanna be. Um, 
if I want to add something into my ferrets or if I want to add something into my um, function key, I can easily do that by, for example, if I go to job and I want to have my point manager, I can see I, I have a star and I want to add that to a favorite, a function or both. In this case, I want to add it to my F3. Um, and then here I already have my start on the F1, so I OK. And now, as long as I stay here, if I just press F3 on my logger, I will get up the point manager uh, very easy. And the similar, I also, instead of having to go uh, kind of through the, the survey and, and start a survey, I have a function key, basically F1, which will start that very efficiently and very quick. And there we, there we go. We've also hopefully made it easier uh, to switch between um, the various options or the various modules that is there. So in this case, we will see that we're connected to what we call the general survey. I can click on that one and I can choose the application. So for example, if I were going into roads, I click that and I'm back here. And now we can see that we have the roads module. And if I go here, I can see the roads module and I can see everything that's defined underneath uh, the roads module. Settings and instrument and these things are as before. So I can go to settings, I can go to my survey styles and I can create a new survey style. Um, in this case, GNSS, and you go through exactly the same. So the rover options and these are all the same pages as you would find um, in the current or the, the, the in the current version of, of Trimble Access. So for those who are familiar with that, it should be very easy to go and, and, and create a new survey style in, in, that, in that sense. That was a very, very brief uh, intro to, uh, to um, what this version of Trimble Access uh, look like. Um, as I say, another part of uh, what we've introduced here is uh, the ability to send data back and forward. And as I said, we have here uh, the project level and, and, and the job level. And if I go to the project level, I can see my project and I can see the job that sits in here. You, you don't have to log in here. So this is separate compared to how it used to in the old, old version, but I can go in here and I can, I can, I can log on. Before that, I'm just gonna shut this one down and I'm gonna open something called the Trimble Sync Manager, which is a standalone feature who give you the capability to create uh, and send data um, from the office to the field. Um, we're using our uh, company-wide platform, Trimble Connect, um, as, the, as the underlying bit for, for doing this, but we've created a, um, a skin that sits on top of, of this for doing some of these more specific things that we want to do for the survey side. Um, so I'm going to log in. sign in. This will take uh, me into my area at uh, Trimble Connect. I will have um, a few projects sitting here. It will take a little while just to, to load up them. <clears throat> so when it's ready, I'm going to go and I'm going to create myself a new project. Um, I'm going to call it Hampshire. And I create it. So there we are. It opens up that project, and underneath this project now, I can have one job or ten jobs. Doesn't matter. I can put in a lot of information here. First of all, I just want to go. I want to go into the properties, and there is a few things I can set. So, for example, I can zoom in to roughly where I want this project to be, uh, something like this. Um, I can update it. Um, I can put in a team, so I can put in groups of people that's going to log in, um, and this can also be used for assigning um, information, assigning particular jobs too. Then I'm going to create a job, and the purpose here, of course, is to create a job that can send or synchronize onto a data logger. 
So Hampshire, I'm going to give it a job. Uh, my job. Form. Reference, and as I say, I can put in people I want to assign this to. Um, I have the capability to, to pretty much to do all those settings that you would do on the logger itself. Um, I can set here on uh, on the office side of things. So that's my units. Um, I can go in, I can set a coordinate system. <clears throat> and in this case, because my project is set to a particular map, it will filter out all our coordinate system and give you suggestions of which coordinate system to, to, to use. I'm going to pick that one and save. Um, what it will now do, it will upload uh, the UK shift grid files to uh, this project. So any data logger that connects to it and synchronizes, if it doesn't have these shift grid files, it will automatically download and use them. So you don't have to long, any longer go and manually download and find these ones. They will come over um, as part of it. Uh, so these are there. I can also go and add in uh, some other files. So uh, there we go. If I have a very small DXF file, I can add in. So any normal files that you would now kind of link in, whether it's control coordinates, CSV files, or even if you have all the job files that you want to you want to add in, you can you can link this into to your project. And when you're ready, you basically say create. And it will now upload this to the cloud, create it, and then the job is uh, is ready. If I go back to Triple Access, um, I can log in here too. And as soon as uh, you're logged on here, and you can filter. So right now, it will only show the jobs that are on the controller. If I also say it's going to put the one that's on the um, on the cloud, you will see that all your uh, project will come listing through. So I created one that's called Hampshire, and it has one job in it. So I download it. Yes. Um, and I open it. And there it is. I've got my um, my DXF file sent through. And again, if I go into job and I look at the properties of the job, all the properties that I set in my um, sync system um, has been transferred over to uh, to the to the logger. Uh, and of course, I can now go and I can do um, a survey, measure it, um, and then I can also send. Uh, this this data data back. Um, another thing here in this properties, I can also set up the project, for example, for reporting. So, if I have style sheets, I use um, so any job that comes back to this project, I want to run through a particular style sheet because I want a particular uh, transformation done. I can actually go in and I can add in my um, style sheet here. So if I have one there, like this, I can add that in. That basically means that whenever there comes a job back, it will ask me when I open this to also run through that particular style sheet. We've listed or linked um, all our style sheets. So we have a web page where we have all our style sheets and we've linked them into uh, the sync manager. So that if you something you miss and we'll look for it, uh, you can easily go in here to to go and find find that bit. <coughs> um, I can do a very quick just uh, start survey like this. Except there we go. Not sure. Observation stored. Let me move it. Not sure. Observation stored. There we go. We've done a little job. And if I go back to the job side, I can I can flick that to in progress and I can say upload. The only thing that happened is just said is this something that's still being worked on. 
Um, or I can also set it to field work complete. In this case, it will automatically send the data um, uh, back. So in this case, it sent it. Whether I want to see it or not, I can I can filter it out. Um, so if I now go back here and I update it, you can see it says field work complete. Um, I can open that job. And it says, um, one map uh, job that's imported and then I can go here and I can either say I want to download it directly which basically will put it um, someplace onto my data logger or I can also um, import it directly to uh, TVC. The last bit I just wanted to touch on on that size is I can also um, go the other way around so in this case I have TVC so I can go to my home screen and here you can start sync manager or trimble sync this will basically let me choose in this case i have a ttm i have some dxf file and I have some points um it selects everything the points i can choose whether i want them in a job or a dxf or a csv the line work goes into a dxf and the surface is as a tpm i can prefix it to something like that i can add a selection and then I can send straight away. My sync manager will say, right, is this the one you want to send over? So I say apply. It will now send that up to my project. I can give it a uh, there and I can assign it to somebody if I want. This one should be ground. And then I say create. It will now take whatever I have in my TBC project. So if I have a new feature code library and anything like that, that will send all that um, that over to the cloud side. So if I go back to my um, back to my um, Hampshire project, I can see now that there is another uh, job here which I can click on, uh, open, and then I can pick this particular job, and I can say download. There we are. Now we've placed that particular um, file um, directly on to the logger. Okay, I think that was uh, what I wanted to cover um, as a as an introduction to uh, the new version of Trimble Access and the TSC7. Um, I think we forgot to say if anybody have any questions feel free to um, to add this into the, the question bar of your uh, site so I'll I will um, I will uh, try to go through them you see here right the poll holder for the TSC3 could be a bit flimsy has this been improved with the TSC7 uh, yes, it, it it has. So one of the things we were very aware of with the TSC3, which has to hold it, it kind of clips onto it. So the TSC7 has a very, very different design and we were very, we were very conscious about making sure that this is a, um, a much firmer holder. So it's, it sits uh, vertical along the logger. Uh, it's a much better fit and when it clicks in, it really, really sits there um, quite well. How do you get data uh, off the logger? Uh, there is various ways you can do this. So one way, as I say, is you can you can you can synchronize it as you saw. Uh, the TS7 is a full Windows 7 computer. So depending on how your IT uh, people are, you can basically you know set it up so it's be part of your uh, network. In that case, it kind of sets itself up as a drive, and when you're online, you can simply just drag it off. Uh, there will be available sync systems for uh, for getting the data off. So the TSC7 is, as I say, it's a Windows 7. So we don't. It's two computers that that sends data off, which is quite different to how the um, the Windows Mobile system used to be. But there is there is there is ways to to do that kind of the same way. You plug in, and one computer becomes host, and the other becomes slave, and then you can log in and and, and drag your data off. Uh, that way. 
can the TSC7 run the old version of Tremble Access? Uh, yes, um, it, it, it can. So when we, as I say, we will not um, discontinue the old version of Tremble Access. So the users will actually have a choice whether they want to run the new version of Tremble Access or what I would call the current version. There will be a new version, which is called 2017-20, which, which is updated to, um, to also run um, and also use the new hardware functionality, such as the ability to work with the SX10, the function keys, and all, all these things. Uh, when can we see them for a demo? Well, we hope to uh, that they will start shipping next week to various people, so that shouldn't be uh, too long before we can somebody from Corey can come along and um, um, and do so. Have a look at it. Are all the current modules in Access support by the new version monitoring, etc.? No, this is um, some version uh, R, and this will be a bit of a transition period. Um, we have notified all the so Trimble makes some of these modules, and a lot of the other modules are made by third-party integrators, people who want to create their own modules and things like that. Um, these have been notified sometime they are busy going through the changes and to, you know change on the layout and things like that so some of the modules will be and some of the modules will come a bit later do you need external gps module for gps search etc no uh, you don't need that that external gps is truly for a kind of more accurate um GPS. The, the TSC7 in itself has an internal GPS, um, which uh, which you can use in the same way as, as it has an internal GPS in the um, in the TSC3. So you can use that for GPS search and things like that. We will also use the TSC7 for other things than Trimble Access. Uh, we have um, a lot of GIS uh, specific requirements. Uh, where maybe the, the external uh, GPS receiver will, or the external GNSS receiver will, will be used. Is access on the TSC3 now dead? No, neither access on the TSC3 nor the TSC3 itself is dead. We will keep uh, we will keep producing the TSC3, and we will keep uh, maintaining uh, the, the access version that is on the TSC3. Can I run Office software of the TSC7, such as Outlook or even TBC? Yes, the TSC7 is a fully functional uh, Windows 10 computer, so it, it can install these things. Um, Outlook, uh, Word, Excel, and all these kind of things shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you can install TBC on it. I, I, I wouldn't really recommend to that. TBC can be a, a resource-hungry package, specifically if you want to start doing point clouds and stuff like that. That wasn't really the aim for for the TSC7 to do that, but it is a it is a full fully functioning computer, so you can run normal um, office software on it. It's also open; it's not closed. So you know, whatever Windows 10 software you have, uh, you should be able to 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 run on that. Will access sync on the TSC3 be improved at all to bring it in with the new uh, access? That is something I will have to check on Sam. I'm not quite sure where uh, that is. The jobs created in Trimble Access 20 will work on the TSC3 access uh, 2017. They will work through the JXL. So we're doing a lot of more automatic um, uh, automatic uh, stand still here automatic um, conversions uh, from the jobs and using the jxl files uh, over to to the and a jxl file will work on basically any versions of uh, trimble access we see here will trimble sync manager synchronize with the ts3 as well it may take a while until the converts up so the new trimble sync manager at this moment in time is only for the new version of uh, trimble access we are aware that there will be a bit of transition time here um, for 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 what it what it is what comes standard with the tsc7 simon i think we get back to you on that um, i don't have a complete list here now of exactly what's in the bundle uh, on it, but it, you know, as normally it will be a, 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 
a number of the accessories that you saw will, will come with it. Can you transfer your license of access from a TSC3 into a TSC7? Yes, you can do that as long as it's in warranty or you're on a software support agreement. So if you have a TSC3 Trimble Access version, then you can move that on to a TSC7 if you want to do so. Can, can I trade my old TSC2 or TSC3 in and buy the TSC7? That is probably something you need to speak to Corrit about and your salesman and see how they best can, can, can solve that. Will the TSC7 work with all the Trimble hardware? Uh, it depends on how old it is, but it will work with uh, the S-series total station. I don't think it will work with an um, jolimeter unit. Um, it will also work with uh, most of the GNSS receivers, so the, the R4s, the r 8 the R6, um, and so on and so on. I don't think we've done any testing with the TSC7 on things like the 5700 and these type of units. That was uh, all the questions. Uh, I hope that uh, did answer uh, most of most of this in terms of uh, of how how you how it was. Um, and I don't know if. Do you, Jared, have anything else to to um, add to that? No, I think you've covered everything <clears throat> very well. Thank you, Ted. Thanks for your time and your knowledge. And yeah, I hope everyone's found this informative and we look forward to being out and giving demos to people in the near future. And with that, if there isn't anything uh, uh, else, I think we will uh, round off this um, webinar. As always, if you have any questions, further questions, uh, contact your local uh, sales representative, which would be more than happy to, to address any of them. Thank you very much for attending today and um, have a nice day. Bye-bye.